Welcome to the BFME 1 online battle arena for the patch 2.22. This time on the map, Tribute of Harnen in a good against evil matchup between Rohan and Isengard. Uruk pit opening, no furnace. And we have double farm opening into the Hobbit Meriadoc Brandy Bog. And just like in the films, we're gonna see Uruks smashing those peasants. Run. You fools, but you can't because I'm faster. Give him all you have. Give him all you had. Okay, the Uruks should be able to win this fight, no problemo. Even without Warchant. The positioning I like though from peasants, so they are making sure that the Uruks are not able to surround them. Isengard will be forced to use the Warchant. The peasants will be taken down by the Uruks, no problemo. The second peasant is coming from the top side, but the worker is scouting. That's very important thing to do. That's gonna increase your reaction time quite a bit. And now the Uruks are trying to bring the Hobbits to Isengard. Guard, guard, guard. <laughs> Beautiful map, by the way. This is a redesign of the map Harad River, which looks way better. Look at this waterfall over here. Oh my god. A bit dangerous, though. You know, the wild, there is a wolf who can bite you. So you gotta be watching out. The Uruks should be able to deal with this, no problemo. We get to see more and more Uruks. Isengard has now in total two lumber mills, but I think he forgot that there is a creep and the Uruks will be bitten a bit by the Vorks, no problemo. The Uruk number uh, one is still alive and chasing down those peasants. And the Hobbit is doing a good job hitting, running, being annoying, pressuring his opponent, getting the maximum out of your units and heroes is the key to victory. But we have a lot of peasants, I mean a lot of Uruks and no more peasants, you know what I'm saying? The Hobbit was able to get cloaked. It looks like Isengard is rotating now to the creep at the top side of the map. This is a war claim, which is quite rewarding because it will give you the option to get one more settlement pretty much for free. And also it will help you to reach the industry power spike a bit faster. That's, a most, that's the most important power spike uh, for the evil factions, Mordor and also Isengard in BFME 1. The Hobbit now being discloaked and trying to kill some workers, but now the Uruks are gonna bring him to Isengard, guard, guard, guard. Hit, run, hit, run, hit, run. Die now. Okay, in the meantime, we have uh, the first Rohirrim upon the field. Rohan has in total two farms, and he needs to pay for each Rohirrim 510. A beautiful trample, but the Hobbit was taken down, unfortunately, for Merry. The Slumber Mill exposed. The Urukpit is level 2, though. The Pikeman will be there very, very soon. It was a very much, pretty much a stable rush from Rohan. That's why the pikemen are not well timed compared to the enemy Rohirrim. But Roh Rohan can always do that because the stable compared to the Gondor stable is a bit cheaper. And also the Rohirrim are cheaper than the Knights of Gondor. Warchan has been used on these two Uruks. They are creeping now the Vorklea at the bottom right side. Again, pretty much a very rewarding creep. You get money, power points and also one more settlement for free. Also this Lumber Mill has been, uh, I mean this creep was taken by Isengard. Okay, so two creeps taken by Eisen, that's a pretty good strategy. An opening, I think he was also not getting punished a, lo a lot. He was able to defend his Lumber Mills at the beginning of the game against the Peasant Spam. It's pretty much the only thing you need to be taken care of when you play Isengard. No towers though, that's a pretty much dangerous situation. <laughs> you know, you need to always feel safe. They don't cost too much because without a tower, he can just go inside and destroy your furnaces. Level 1 furnace, not quite tanky. Can be taken down quite, uh, quite fast, you know, by the enemy Rohirrim warriors. The peasant was able to sneak through to, to this area and they should be able to take down this Lumber Mill too. One power point in total for Rohan and two power points for Aizen. But he didn't choose his industry yet. He should be doing this the second the two power points are available. Each second is so important in an RTS game. Time management, eco management, pretty much one of the most important mechanics you need to master in order to win more games. The Berserker will be recruited to deal with this level 2 peasant. The splash damage is coming in handy. But the level 2 peasant is just built different, hitting a bit harder, so he's trying to micro. One of the changes we made to the Berserkers is that they are able to heal out of combat. So if you, you know, when you are low like this, they will slowly uh, start regenerating their HP back to full. But you need to be out of combat for like, I, don't, I think like 10-15 seconds to enable this. If the peasant rotating now to the bottom side, the pikemen, they need to be running away. You know, sometimes uh, retreatment is also a strategy. The creep should be contested by the pikemen. You, you are not allowed to allow him to creep this. 
and give him power points because he's very close to three power point power spike on this map we have plenty of creeps actually so getting to three power point is not really a difficult thing to do the berserker trying to protect the pikemen from the peasants and now it's a 2v1 situation should be easily handled the creep will be taken by the rohirrim three power point unlocked Isengard still didn't go for the industry. He's holding on it for a very long time. I don't know what he's planning to do. Again, he should use it because the earlier you use it, the faster it's going to be reloading and you can use it for a second time, you know? So Rohan is kind of dominating his own side of the map. He's going to take the remaining creeps too. As for example, this one at the bottom left corner and then this one right after. I mean, this map is looking pretty nice to me. Okay, the Rohirrim have to be careful or, or... Oh, one of them is going to be taken down by the Berserker. It's a unfortunate situation. Unfortunate, you know, event. We have very good map control for Aizen. He has in total one, um, one, two, three Lumber Mill, but he's about to get the Lumber Mill number four. That's going to give him even more food bonus. A uh, food bonus, I mean, and he will be able to buy the Armory even cheaper. But he's going for the Warp Pit for now. Sharko could be a nice hero. We changed him quite a bit. He's now more, you know, stronger, but also, oh, nice, nice, nice. Be careful there with the level four. War chanted pikemen with the porcupine formation, super difficult to be dealt with. He also give them the forge blades, those peasants, by the way. That's why they are able to deal so much damage to the berserker. The lords going to be very important for later on. The earlier you recruit them, the easier it is to get the iron hand, you know, the, the white hand, I mean, for the leadership part. Oh, be careful there. The pikemen are painful to be dealt with. Four Lumber Mills, 20% wood bonus. That's a lot of cost reduction. A tower will only cost you now 120. And it's one of the cheap... It's the cheapest building, basically, for the evil faction. So basically, the, the way the percentage system obviously work, you get more benefit out of that if you build an um, expensive structure, like an armory, for example, or the war pit, or the siege works. These are the three most expensive Isengard buildings. For Mordor, there are even more options. We have Siege Works, Mumma Kilpan, Troll Cage. But Isengard is dominating the map. And I think the player forgot about this creep there over here. Which can be easily taken. And it looks like he's preparing for the first big rush. The Alvin summon has been... It is now Orkhorn in heat. And now the Uruks pikemen will get slaughtered by the elves. And the first big rush is about to happen. Oh, be careful with that with the Rohirrim, level 4. The Urukpit is quite tanky, there comes the healing. It looks like the tower is kind of blocking himself, by the way. You need to cancel the tower here to make sure that your pikemen are able to attack. In the Urukpit, the most valuable structure in the castle of Isengard has been taken down, boys. The Vorks, they don't stand a chance against upgraded Rohirrim warriors. They've also added lots of visual changes, um, different uh, models, textures for the game. In this version, you can see the Vorks have different skins. One of them is black, one of them is brown, one of them is white, you know. And also, we will keep improving this in terms of visual changes. We will hopefully be able to add more maps to the map pool. And also, you know, balance the game out quite nicely. And you can play this game also online by downloading the patch 2.2 launcher. Patch 2.2 launcher in the description down below. And for all games. One, two, and rise of Twitch King. The Lumber Mill is going to be taken down. We have also Theodore King upon the field. A hero who needs to be careful against the Lourdes. If Lourdes gets the chance to cripple him, he will die, most likely. Because Theodore is super squishy hero. He's only 900 health, you know. That's not a lot. Like Lourdes is, for example, 1,220 health. Like, that's a lot. Big differential. Be careful there, Theodin King. Hunt them down. Hunt them down. Theodin King stands alone. Oh, so close, actually, so close. But there comes Lourdes. Oh my. What a long shot. What? That's crazy. Okay, he's gonna take the script, by the way, with the Warc Riders and the Pikemen. Warton has been used, heavy armor has been purchased on this um, enemy pikeman. And now every upgrade is gonna come in clutch. We have forge bleeds, heavy armor, and banner. Now he's going for the fire upgrade. 
Maybe Sharko could be nice. Saruman would be amazing. Because now, at some point of the time, against Rohan, you will slowly start losing map control. Because the combination of Rohirrim and Rohirrim Archers is super dangerous for Aizen. Is Rohirrim Archer can counter both Vorks, but also the enemy pikemen. Oh, be careful there. There are still pikemen. Lourdes is chilling though. You need to be actively playing the game with Lourdes. All Lourdes needs is like one or two pikemen, and then he's gonna be safe. You can be annoying, shoot the Rohir marches down, and try to get experience, actively party speed. Now he's making this Uruk pikemen and Uruk crossbowman combo. I mean, Uruk pikemen, crossbowman, and Uruk crossbowman combination. This combo is pretty good against enemy horses because as you charge into them, the pikemen will deal the revenge damage, which will cause you to get one shotted. You wanna turn though. Uh, if you don't turn there, the crossbow man, if you get this kind of trample off, it's actually amazing because the way the combo is designed, the melee units can't really party speed a lot in those fights. So if you manage to kill the crossbow man hidden behind the Uruks or the pikemen, you should be in a phenomenal spot. Beautiful trample one more time. But remember, Isengard has no healing, no well you can build, so they will stay damaged now forever, right? So Rohan is being annoying. We have double lumber mill around the opponent side of the map. I mean, Isengard's eco should be looking amazing. He finally went for the industry. He has even the power points now he needs for the freezing rain too. No outpost control for either player. There are two outposts on the map. And the works you will see, even with Warchant, it's a triangle. Three Rohirrim Archer shooting from every location and pretty much kiting these Warp Riders and they will be taken down. Nice. Oh, that's a beautiful army. That's a pretty much scary army, actually. Three combos, one on one regular pikeman, and Lourdes almost level 4 too. Remember, level 5 is a massive upgrade for the Isengard army. You dealing constantly 60% more damage will make you to a, you know, end boss level like army. Lurz, the fighting Urukai. Cripple him. You shall not move. Okay, in this situation, it's very important to for Lurz to get the last hit, actually. Give it to Lurz. Uh, here, you need to press S on your army. Because he would, he's dead 100%. Here, you need to micro a little bit. Because it's so rewarding if you do that. Ooh, be careful with the trample. The pikeman with the pork, uh, with the pork pan formation and forge bleeds will just one shot you. But like mentioned before, the combination of Rohirrim Archer and normal regular Rohirrim is pretty much guaranteed map control for Rohan, and the base is kind of exposed. Industry is active. We have level three furnaces all over the place. They will have kind of good self defense as evil uh, resource buildings level three can actually shoot. And there comes the Alvin summon I mean, for the second time. Rohan has also four power points in the bank. The base is going to happen now. The level 2 furnace. Oh, actually, he did a good job trampling there. Um, the thing about the Rohirrim, though, is when you are using the wedge formation, they have more engage range. So if you don't want them to run into the enemy army, you have two options. Either you put the whole ground stance on them, or you use the regular formation. Isengard is rotating. Now, he, you, there is no reason for you to be ever here when you, have, when you are not sieging. In order to win this match as Eisen against Rohan, you need to siege him as soon as possible. So when you have this kind of army with three combos in Lourdes, you, are, you have spiked your army strength, right? And what you want to do is you want to build a siege works at the outpost, bring one to Ram, and kind of bring the fight to them. That's one of the most important things you need to understand when you play evil against good. Because goods have wall. You have no pressure on them if you don't siege them, right? And he can ignore your army. Even if you are here, he doesn't need to fight you. He can just walk around you and go for the beast instead. And that's exactly what the player Rohan player did actually in this situation. And you can't keep up with the speed of the horses. You know, your combos are immobile units. They are strong in all out fights, yes. But they can't catch. They can't chase. And summon. The protectors of the Fangorn forest have been summoned to do, their, to do their duty against the forces of evil. And that should be getting lots of experience here. Remember, the pikemen can't be trampled even by the ants, but the crossbowmen can. 
in, when you have no crossbowmen in the army or when you have only two of them left, the damage output from the combo horde battalion will be super limited. Now here in King Gu for a charge situation, level almost two. Remember level four is a massive spike for the King of Rohan. Oh, he got crippled though, deja vu, you know. The ants are trampling. There comes the Albin Wood. Remember, no more heal available. Lords could go in there with the carnage and take down Hirin, but he would die in exchange to that. There is just too much protection now for the king. Rally to me. Rally to me. Just like in the films. And unlike in the films, he was saved in this situation. Eisen, not super rich. He has the freezing rain through. Being able to kill those ants in the, in the Isengard castle. Lord was able to survive. I mean, he has good map control still. These two Lumber Mills are there for a very long time. There is a Lumber Mill coming up for this location too. But Isengard, I mean, Rohan is being able to destroy those Lumber Mills over and over again, denying them to reach level 2 and level 3. That's going to make Isengard even wealthier. Bad trample. There is a Legolas hoax strike, as I can see. Isengard is in prison situation. The ants have no more time left in Middle Earth, and they need to say goodbye to this game for now. The war chan has been used, boys. The war pit level 2. Rain available. But again, even if you use rain, like, I want you to understand that you need to force your opponent into fighting. And the only way to do that is when you siege him. Then he has no choice but fighting. Then you want to turn this into your own favor by using war chant and the rain. Then you have your own leadership while enemy has no leadership. Because if you use Rin somewhere else, it, the benefit you will get from it is going to be super low. And it won't be that valuable either. So you, you have money, right? You can go for this outpost and just bring some rams and kind of threaten his castle. That will kind of keep him busy. And you should scale for free. When he has a huge army now, three combos in the base. We have three combos around this location. It looks like you want to save up for Saruman. He has around about 3,000. And it's a huge Rohirrim army over there. I don't know if it's smart to fight this. He's going to summon the elves and he's all ready to fight even with the ring there is a well which will recover your units over and over again isengard is building running for his life he's using the palante to get even more movement speed but he knows he can't get away from the situation so he decides to turn and fight legolas is hitting like a truck that is a war chain, and that's exactly what Rohan can do beat the war chain and disengage now you're gonna bring the fight to you in which you are stronger you have stage leadership you have the well recovery and also, Legolas has been crippled. There comes the... Ooh, what a beautiful trample. We have even Gimli up on the field. He's going to finally choose the Tainted Land, but he's not deciding to cover this. Basically, fighting on the enemy Alvin Wood is the same like fighting under the effect of the rain. And remember, they have like more army. They have Alvin summon. They have a bunch of Rohirrim archers. They have the leadership because the regenerate units will receive their leadership back and it's a big big w there for rohan he was able to gather so many power points from this fight he's up to seven power points in total that means he needs only three more power points isengard is actually so down he's at only six power points in total he wasn't able to kill a lot from rohan beside theodin a few times but theodin is a very cheap hero so killing him will not give you that many power points you know what i'm saying But the big boy is here now, boys. The big daddy. March to Helm's Deep. Leave none alive. You have Gimli. Speedy Gonzalez. Kaboom! I mean, they have leadership there. They don't die to one shot. Gimli is super tanky, though. He can... Oh, Legolas. Ooh, Legolas got crippled as knife fighter. And the army... Of Isengard is now finally ready with triple leadership. Oh my god, it was actually funny. You got fired, son. <laughs> you got fired, son. Okay. I mean, Isengard is still good eco though. Like, we have uh, four Lumber Mills in total, right? That's pretty good for Isen. 
But Rohan is also good eco. They have also one, two, three, four farms. So they are splitting the map in two pieces. But Rohan is the one who has the map control and outpost control, which is, by the way, uh, the most important thing to have in lead game. When you get close to the point of getting Balrog or the army of the dead, the outpost is going to be the thing that can save you. So, 8 and a half power points versus 7. Remember, the good faction will unlock it with 10 power points in total. I mean, he's rushing it too, but evil, he went also for the land. But, but he's not really fighting in a favorable way. The, the amount of power points he mostly gained from losing stuff. He really didn't kill too much from Rohan, besides Legolas and few times Thurin. Because he's not really fighting, you know? Now you are strong, right? You have Warchant, Saruman, Lourdes. Just go and break, bring the fight to them. By the way, almost level 4, Tyrion King. We have also Eoma upon the field. That's a pretty strong ar uh, army of Rohan. He's also Aragorn without Anduril Sword. That's why he's so slow. Rohan is trying to fish power points here by destroying the sentry towers over and over again. The damage of the Rohirrim Archer kind of illegal. There comes the end summon for the second time, but there is a Saruman now. He's gonna steal them and say, fight for me and I will reward you. The ends are burning. Eoma is running it down. Kill Theodin first. Eoma is gonna get one-shotted. Heal is gonna be used, but Theodin is gonna be also one-shotted. It's a big fight for Aizen. Look at the Isengard army. Aragorn has been crippled. Aragorn can't get away from the situation. The ends are going to war. Aragorn, Eoma and Theodin has been taken down. It's a very good fight to take for Aizen, and he was able to close the difference, the power point gap, but the ends are now going again in the favor of Rohan. He will get power points from the end trample, as you can see and tell, but the ends are getting killed. 13 power points versus 9.5. There comes the Alvin Wood. Aizenga will now decide to cover this, and you can... By the way, there is a golden rule when you should cover the land and when not. Remember, the land is like a double-edged sword, right? If you cover your, your opponent's land, he can use your land against you at some point of the time. He can just basically go over your own land and regain his leadership back, right? That's the problem with the land. But in this specific situation, I think it's okay to just cover the land, to have more armor leadership, and you basically have still more leadership than your opponent does. That's the most important thing to understand. You have Warchant, Lords, and Saruman. This tri trio combination plus the land armor leadership will make your army stronger than enemy army anyway. But the leadership won't matter that much against the mighty summon of EOD. It's gonna choose it and potentially use it to kill this army over there. But luckily, he has another army in the base though. You need to always be prepared. And heroes might be able to survive this too with the you know Palantir. Theodin is back on the menu, boys, level almost four. Now he's finally going for the siege, but it might be a little bit too late for this. But I want you to take a look into the power points from... Look at the power points now from Evil. You see, as he's losing stuff, he's gaining power points. That's the main differential between Evil and Good. EOD chasing, but they are, they are using Palantir. You can see they are fast. They were also far away from the EOD at the first place. It looks like they will be both able to survive. Oh, five more seconds and this guy would be dead. If they ever catch up to you, you are dead in a second. But that's a good uh, situation for Isengard still, though. The army is still there. I mean, he has two combos in the base, and his hero survived. That's a very good strategy and technology from Isengard, too. You can make more armies and then keep a couple of them in your own castle, just for that case of scenario in which your army might get wiped out by the army of the dead, by the offbreakers. Saruman! Almost 15 power points. Aizen is still good map control. He's even pressuring with the Walk Riders, which I really like to see. But he's also farming, uh, giving power points. The Walk Riders have no chance against Rohirrim with full upgrades. You just can't win this. That's not possible. Look at the damage from the Rohirrim Archer, man. Holy. Here's the crossbowman with the Fyro. You want to shoot down the Rohirrim Archers with that, not the regular Rohirrim. The Rohirrim army boys. Oh, almost level 3 Gimli though. 
Does he have GC? Almost. Like, when he kills a few workers, he should be getting that. Very close to Glorious Charge. It's a massive power spike for the for the uh, Rohan faction. You know, obviously. We need more, more army, though. You want to spam this army. But he's poor now. I mean, that's a very scary Rohan army to me. You see, late game Rohan is not weak by all means, you know? Yama is also almost level 3. Super close to level 4. Come on, kill some workers, Theorin King. You can do it. Unlock that glorious charge of yours. Demolish? Oh my god, he didn't demolish in time. And Theorin was able to get the missing... Ex he would get it anyway, right? He was very close. You don't want to look. There is no reason for you to ever use Vorshan on the on the works when you have no Palantir. You have no. He can just get away from you, right? That you can't win this, bro. Works. You just ignore the Rohirrim and go for the farms. You don't want to take the fight. Works are not built like this. They are not really good against other horses that much. They are good for trampling into units. They are good for the map control, but they are not really there to kill Rohirrim and Knights of Gondor. Oh, he had to use heal there to save the level nine. Almost 18 power points. Now he's using the Palantir, but there is a backup. And, oh, that's going to be a massive fight, boys. Take it. Take the fight. Rain is on cooldown. I think with the GC and potential trample, you could pull this off. Rowan is actually access again to the ends. So now all in with everything you got. That's a very strong army. Lord has been one-shotted. Eoma is level 3. There comes the GC. Trample, 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 trample. The steel won't connect. Sarman. Sarman is gonna be taken down in a second. Can we not make peace, you and I? 245 for killing the dingo. There comes the Balrog of the ancient war. But the timing could have not been worse, son. Now he has not the range to whip this Aragorn either. He's trying to get in range there, but you can fly non-stop, right? You can fly over and over and over again. But that was a huge battle to take for Rohan. A couple of miss microing there with the Isengard army. Lords and Saruman, you want to always keep them behind. So they can just provide leadership. You can't really step up against this Rohirrim Archer army. If you have no rain, they will just one-tap you, as you have seen in the previous fight. I mean, not much time remaining anymore for the Balrog. So he can get only one breath fire off. There is no shot. He can get the second one. Rohan is sieging in the meantime. Level 5, level almost 4, which will be even stronger. Uh, will, which will lead you even for a stronger Rohan army. Above heroes gone. Yoma level 4. 70% more damage leadership. Look at the DPS. The Orphan is going to be shattered into pieces. in the army plus the castle of Isengard will fall. And Rohan, just like in the films, is able to defeat Isengard in the battle for Middle-earth in 2024. I mean, that's a huge year for BFMU, by the way, guys, with the arena. You can play the games, download the games, play online with your friends. And also, it's a special year, too, because it's a 20 years anniversary. Nice LN deal for the, for the pose in, in, into the Atelas. And Legolas is shooting. The Rohan army boys ends level 10. We hit him all over the place. And Rangel has been defeated. GG. Well played. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, you know what to do. I hope to see you all in the next video. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.